ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على النبي رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Indeed, all praise and gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us, from us our humble efforts. We hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make these stories one that is beneficial for each and every one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَقَصُصِ الْقَصَصَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Relate unto them the stories فَقَصُصِ الْقَصَصَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Rehearse unto them these stories Perhaps we take reflection لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Perhaps many of us will leave this gathering today and none of these stories will mean anything to us because we're too taken up into the dunya. The dunya is sucking us like a vacuum. <laughs> Rehearse unto them, relate. So every time you read the story in the masjid, in your home, to your kids. This is the power, this is what we need. We need stimulations from these stories. We have revealed unto you the best of stories. Every time you become bored and depressed, you go and turn up your television, BBC News. Or maybe you turn up Al Jazeera and you become more depressed. You become more depressed, subhanAllah. But whenever we are sad, none of us really take this Quran and we go back to this Quran, read some ayat, comprehend, see what Ibn Kathir al Tabari and Qurtubi has to say. So today, we Ibn Allahi Azza wa Jal, we will speak about the best. Four women that ever existed. We will speak about these four women because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke at length about these women. We will speak about these women because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he received this Quran, he, there were so many stories about these women. We want to look at these stories bi idnillahi azza wa jal. Because we want to take Ibrah, ayat, lessons, signs. And we want to incul inculcate them in our lives, especially our sisters. We want the sisters today to know that there's so many things you can take from the lives of these stories. We will speak about Asiya. Then we will speak about Maryam. Then we will speak about Khadija. And then her daughter Fatima radiallahu anhunna. May Allah be pleased with them. We will speak about four women. Wallah, each one of these women we can have lessons upon lessons. Just discuss one, the story of one of these women. So much is mentioned in the tafsir and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا امْرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بْنِ لِي رَبِّ بْنِ لِي عِنَّكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set forth an example for those who believe the wife of Fir'aun 
when she said, Oh my Lord, build for me, build for me a home with you in paradise and save me from Fir'aun and his work and save me from the people who are wrongdoers. And Maryam, the daughter of Imran, who, got, who guarded her chastity and we breathed into it through our ruh and she testified to the truth of, of her Lord, the kalimat, the words, the kutub, the book, and she was from the quality, from those who were pious. Abdullah ibn Abbas anhu says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he threw four lines on the earth, onto the ground, in the sand, and then he says, do you know what these lines mean? And the companions of the Allah anhum says, Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam. Whenever these companions do not know the answer to a question that was asked by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will say Allah and his messenger know best. Then he said, the best among the women, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the, these the, afdalu nisai ahlil jannah, Khadija bintu Khuwailid, wa Fatima bintu Muhammad, wa Maryam ibnatu Imran, wa Asiya bintu Muzahid, imra'atu Fir'aun. These four lines mean that they are four beautiful, best women of this world. The best among the women of paradise are Khadija, the daughter of Khuwailid, and Fatima bintu Muhammad, the daughter of Muhammad, referred to his own daughter, radiallahu anhi. Wa Maryam bintu Imran, Maryam, the daughter of Imran, and Asiya bintu Muzahim, wife of Fir'aun. Asiya, the wife, the, the daughter of Muzahim, who was the wife of Fir'aun. It is confirmed in the two Sahih and Bukhari wa Muslim from Abu Musa al Ash'ari that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kamula min al rijali kathirun. وَلَمْ يَكْمُلْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ إِلَّا آسِيَ إِمْرَأَةُ فِرْعَوْنِ Many men have reached the level of perfection in faith, but none among the women have reached the perfection of faith except إِلَّا آسِيَ آسِيَ the, the wife of Fir'aun وَمَرْيَمْ إِبْنَةُ Imran, Maryam, the daughter of Imran وَخَدِيجَ بِنْتُ خُوَيْلِدْ Khadija, the daughter of Khuwailid, wa inna fadla Aisha ala nisa'i ka fadli thariri ala sa'ir ta'am. And Aisha, the superiority of Aisha to the other woman is that the superiority of thari is a kind of lettuce, a kind of thing that you put over the food to make it nice to complete it. Like you put the cherry on a cake, so you put this kind of thari kind of um, lettuce that goes on the food and Aisha to these women is like this lettuce upon the, the, the other food. Asiya bintu Muzahim. First we speak of Asiya ayyuhan nas. We speak of Asiya, may Allah have mercy on her, the bint, the, the bint of Muzahim. We said she was from among the, the best of models for women. Asiya's greatness is in fact that although she was the wife of the most powerful and arrogant and the most, most tyrant of leaders, of leaders in Egypt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she was able to see the truth, subhanAllah. Asiya was among the, the women of Egypt, her husband was the most influential. Her husband was the most powerful, the most arrogant. He was the most tyrant rulers of Egypt. He was the most disbelieving on the face of this earth, subhanAllah. And as your brother, may Allah have mercy on her then, even though he was so powerful and he was so messed up, this Fir'aun. Fir'aun, by the way, is a title that's given to the rulers of Egypt. So those who rule England, they call them prime ministers. And above him is called the queen. But in the time of Egypt, 
they used to call him Fir'aun. So this was a title like president, prime minister. The highest authority was known as Fir'aun. He was such a tyrant and yet his wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has chosen her and provided. Give, he has given her a heart that is so soft, subhanAllah. Fir'aun, he wanted, he had this kind of, this wobbly kind of dream where he just thought that someone would take his throne away. So then he brought his magicians saying, you know what, I just saw a wobbly dream and I'm wobbling myself as well. Can you interpret this dream for me? And then they said, someone will come from this land who will take your power. This Fir'aun became so angry, for one whole year he would kill the boys. And then the following year he leave them. And then the following year he killed the boys, every single. He had his soldiers, you know like MI5 and MI6. They go through every land and they see what's happening in the houses. They know everything about each and every one of us. They know everything that you're doing because they know your IP address. They know what kind of things you're logging on to. On these phones, these chips, they know everything that you do. This is why they want to do your plastic cards, your debit cards, your credit card. They just know. Fir'aun, his way was doing it. Send the men through the lands. Send the ladies. Check them out. See who's pregnant. Take a note. Keep track of when she will deliver. So they knew everything when the women will deliver. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who is above. He knows. He knows what He wants. He knows what He wants for His creatures. He gave us this, this ability to think, to comprehend, and to do the right things. Fir'aun was killing everyone, killing the little boys, subhanAllah, killing the babies. Soldiers come through the land, they look for the babies as soon as they were born. They take a knife and they slit the neck of these babies, subhanAllah. The mother of Fir'aun, the mother of Moses, Afwan, the mother of Moses, she then delivered because she hired her pregnancy with her big clothing by the fuddle of Rabbul Alameen. So after she delivered a child, she became fearful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired, we inspired the mother of Moses to suckle him. But when you fear for him, then cast him into the river and fear not, nor grieve. Verily, we shall bring him back to you and shall make him one of the messengers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the mother of Moses such form words. She is frightened. Allah gave her the instruction to build a little, little boat, a box, whatever she took. She put the baby in and then she put the baby to float along the Nile River until it floated along to the banks of the castle of Fir'aun. And his sister, she says, go, follow him, look, see where he's going to go. SubhanAllah. She received inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then she put this little baby in the box. Then she placed this baby in the river and it's floating along the banks of the river. And she says to his sister, go, follow that box and see where it stops. And she followed the box and then it stopped into the house of Fir'aun. Fir'aun says, no, we will kill him. It's the year of killing. She's the, then the wife of Fir'aun, she convinced him and she says, no, perhaps we take him a wallet. Nabtakhidhu wallet. We take him a wallet or we take him a kuratu ayn. Something that brings joy to the eyes. But his wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the love of Iman and the household of Fir'aun pick him up that he might become for them an enemy and a cause of grief. Verily Fir'aun, Haman and the armies were sinners. Fir'aun, his general commander Haman and the whole army, they were criminals, Mujrimun. Just like the armies of today, subhanAllah. We have many armies today, if you don't give allegiance, they will clip your ears. This is the kind of Fir'aun we have of this Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help those Muslims in every land. And the wife of Fir'aun said, A comfort of eye for me and for you. 
Not only will this child be a comfort of eye, comfort of eye for me, but for you as well, for the own. Kill him not. Perhaps he may be a benefit for us. She said, no, he might be a benefit. Comfort for me, comfort for you, and maybe a benefit as well. Or maybe we adopt him as a son. Or maybe, look, we find him in the river. Where could this baby be coming from, subhanAllah? And they perceive not. Deaf, dumb, and blind. When Allah wants you to be deaf, dumb, dumb, and blind, then you can't do anything, subhanAllah. You see, but that you don't. You hear, but you can't. Because the heart doesn't reach. Hey, Allah is removing the ability from these people in the past, the, ca the castle, not to comprehend. Oh, this child, man, this child. We don't want him. They couldn't say this, so they left him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he protected him. Fir'aun was the most tyrannical among the people of the earth and the most disbelieving. By Allah, his wife was not affected by this husband's disbelief because she obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was softened, she, she saved Musa alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused Musa alayhi salam to grow up in this house of Fir'aun. And then he started the message. Ibn Jarir recorded that Sulaiman said the wife of Fir'aun was tortured until the sun, on, under the sun. And when Fir'aun would finish the torture sessions, the angels would shade, him with, with, shade her with their wings. She was shown her place in paradise. While she was alive, a believer, she made this supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being in this much luxury and honor and in esteem. She believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from her. She then raised one of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This baby, he wouldn't suckle from any mother in the whole land. So the people in the palace became fearful. They said, go look in the land and find someone to suckle this baby. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the mother of Moses to go into the castle in some narration and she would suckle him and take a wage and go home laughing. Subhanallah. So her child is alive, he wasn't killed. He floated along the bank and she goes suckle him, take her wage and go home. Subhanallah. Tawakkul ala Allah. لَوَنَّكُمْ تَوَكَّلْتُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِ لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ تَغْدُوا خِمَاسَ وَتَرُوحُ بِطَانًا رواه أحمد وترمذي If you were to have the true reliance and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will feed you like the birds in the air They go hungry bellies in the morning leaving their nest and they return while they're filled She take a wage as well from the, from the palace so she was indeed from among those who were pious. Then Fir'aun, after he knew of her Islam and her belief, when the, when the magicians, Wallahi, the story of Fir'aun, we could take another couple of hours. But I'm going to stipulate 15, 20 minutes for each of these persons, and then we move on with the Allah Azza wa Jal. So after she displayed her, after the magician came and defeated him, and Musa alayhi salam, he, he, he threw his stick and it became a serpent and swallowed the magician's stick. And then they all became Muslim. He became more angry. I will kill you and I will cut your legs and I will cut your feet and I will kill each and every one of you. He, he, he became more mental, this guy. This Fir'aun guy. So he started killing more people, cutting the limbs, cutting the hands. His own wife, subhanAllah, he would torture her in such an extent in the sun. And sun in the Middle East and in the Arabian Peninsula is no kind of easy sun, subhanAllah. We hardly see sun in England. The sun was intense, subhanAllah. And then he would punish her. And then whenever he walks away and go with the angels, we put their wings for her. Shaded her, subhanAllah. Ibn Jarir said that al Qasim. Ibn Abi Bazza said, Fir'aun wife used to ask, Fir'aun wife used to, used to ask who prevailed when she was told, who prevailed when she was told Musa and Harun prevailed. She said, I believe in the Lord of Musa and Harun. 
Fir'aun sent his, his aides to her and said to them, find the biggest stone. So when she, they even, even, even when she was dying, subhanAllah, they said, ask her what she believes in. She says she believes in the Lord of Musa. SubhanAllah. Then he instructed his men to go and find a massive, huge boulder, like the ones he used to place on Bilal's back, like the ones he placed on the Muslims in every one of these prisons, everywhere you go, SubhanAllah. They torture the Muslims. As long as you're Muslim, Allah, this ibtila will come from every direction, SubhanAllah. May Allah keep the Muslim and preserve them. Fir'aun, he then sent for a massive, biggest boulder, and if she insists on keeping her face, faith throw the stone and her otherwise if she if she otherwise she is my wife when they came to her she looked up to the sky and was able to see her place in Jannah she persisted in her faith and her soul was then captured and the stone was thrown on her lifeless body and this is the meaning so when she looked up to the sky and this is reported by Ibn Jarir al Hasim Ibn Abi Bazza here her soul left her body, then it dropped this massive boulder on a dead body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took her. And this is the meaning of the ayah. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مُرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بْنِ لِي رَبِّ بْنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعْمَلِي وَنَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Subhanahu wa ta'ala build for me a palace, a house in Jannah and save me from Fir'aun and his cruel people. In this lady we see the example of supreme sacrifice by Mary and Fir'aun. Her faith wasn't shaken even though she had the most corrupt husband on the face of this earth. The queen of Egypt, she gained everything that she wanted in this life from the materialistic point of view. You can think about it, the palaces, clothing, places, jewels, servants, maid, you name it, subhanAllah. But yet she did not give up her religion, subhanAllah. Some of our sisters, subhanAllah, they have nothing, nothing, and they just don't want to believe in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of them, they have every single thing that you can think about, Allah bless them, and you don't see an ounce of iman in their heart, subhanAllah. They walk in the road like tabarruj al jahiliyyah they walk while they see their hair flowing, they color themselves like every single color you can think about. They wear tight clothing, they wear jeans, they're topless, bottomless, frontless, backless, every kind of clothing, subhanAllah. They cut their hair, they want to look like men, subhanAllah. So this is the state of our sisters, but in this lady of, in this woman, Asiya, may Allah have mercy on her, Wallahi. This woman alone is enough for our sisters today. This Fir'aun, her palaces, her money, nothing meant anything to her because she knew she had faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us from among the most influential and the greatest of women. We now look at Maryam, the story of Maryam. Maryam literally means a maid servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this story, there is a surah in the Quran that's called Maryam. There's a whole chapter in the Quran that's called Maryam. How many eyes do we have in Surah Maryam? Anyone? How many eyes do we have in Surah Maryam? No one memorized Surah Maryam? Mary. Is there even a chapter in the Quran that's called Mary? Huh? Do you think there's a chapter in the Quran that's called Mary? No. Is there a chapter that's called Imran? Yeah, there is a chapter that's called Imran, number three. And chapter number 19 is called Maryam. SubhanAllah. So there you go. Chapter 98, Ayah, and it's a surah number 19 in the Quran. Surah Ali Imran, you can find the story of, of, of Maryam from ayah number 35 around there, so 48, about 30 ayat, and we can find the same story repeated again and some other details in Surah Maryam, Surah 19. 
and her mother was Hannah. Maryam's mom was Hannah, and her husband was Imran, and Zachariah wife and Hannah's sisters Hannah's sister were two sisters so Zachariah's wife and Hannah's Maryam's mom's sister who is a Khala they were sisters and then you have from Zachariah you have Yahya John and from Maryam you had Isa. How many prophets existed at the same time? Three. Zachariah, Yahya, and Isa. Subhanallah. Three prophets at the same time. Three prophets existed at the same time. And the wife of Imran mentioned here is the mother of Maryam and her name was Hannah bintu Fakul. So Maryam's mom was Hannah bint Fakul. Maryam is one of the noble women and the best of women mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, Inna Allah astafa Adam wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made Adam and Nuh and the family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran above the nations. He has made them examples. Nations upon nations. Allah hears and he knows. If قالت امرأة عمران رب إني نذرت لك ما في بطني محررا. So Imran, the the wife of Imran, who was what's her name was Hannah. Pay attention. If قالت امرأة عمران who was Hannah. Rabbi inni nadhartu laka ma fi matani muharrara This progeny that's in my belly, I want to give it in sacrifice to you. I want to give this in service to you. So it was a custom there where the people of Jerusalem would place their boy children, the boy child, in Masjid al-Aqsa to worship, to worship and to live up there and to grow up good people. فَتَقَبَّلْ مِنِّي إِنَّكَ هَذَا السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you to accept this for me. فَلَمَّا وَضَعْتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْثَى When she gave birth, she says, Oh subhanallah, I gave birth to a female. Wallahu a'lamu bima wadat. Of course, Allah knew this. So she wanted a boy. Why? Because they put them in Masjid al Aqsa in service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There goes the girl. So she became amazed. It's a female. It's like saying, Oh my God, it's a female. What do I do now? Then Allah knows. وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنثَى And the male is not like the female. وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمَ وَإِنِّي عُيْدُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek refuge in you from this progeny, Maryam, and her progeny that will come after her, who would be? Isa. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that every single Mawlu that forms Shaitan, he pokes them. He, he, he pushes his finger against them. So then they cry. The child cried. Except for Maryam and Isa, they did not cry. Subhanallah. 
Every Maulu, you, I, or grandpa, every one of us sitting in this masjid, we cried when we were born. Except for Maryam and Isa because of this dua. This dua of this mother, because of this dua, he didn't. Allah didn't cause this to happen. فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He then accepted this from her and He made a progeny from her and her child, one that is accepted and one that is good. فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا so Zachariah now, she had no father. So Maryam gave birth, um, Hannah gave birth to Maryam, and then Zachariah was in charge of Maryam now, because remember, Imran died. Hannah's husband was Imran, and he died before she was born. This Maryam. And now Maryam is born now, and then she is given birth. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls Zachariah wa kaffalaha Zachariah. So Zachariah now is in charge of looking after Maryam. So her mother still, even though she was a female, she put her into the Bajal Maqdis, into this beautiful masjid, the Masjid al-Aqsa. كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابَ وَجَلَهَا عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَا Every time Zakari enters this mihrab, this room, this secluded room in this masjid where he puts her to grow up in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he found rizqa, sustenance. No one gave it to her. He didn't give it. He had access to the place. He was overlooking. He was monitoring. And not only this, he saw the fruits of winter in the time of summer. And at summertime, he saw the food of winter. He's astonished. He, he is just blowing to the skies. What is wrong here? Where you find this summer food? Where you find this winter food? This summer? Where did you find this food? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues saying, She says, Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha She, Maryam, said to him, Allah gave sustenance to whomsoever he wants without limits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave sustenance. Look at this little kid, this young, this young Maryam is teaching Zachariah, who was old, gray hair, just feeble. And then Zachariah, wallahi, Zachariah couldn't, he couldn't, wallahi, he couldn't. He saw some boy, he, his, subhanAllah, so many stories, I don't even know where to begin, subhanAllah. I just, I'm thinking I'm going to short this way so then the 50 minutes on this, this morning is going to be finished in a minute, subhanAllah. Zachariah then he says, no, I, I want a child, I really want a child now. After he saw the food of winter in summer, and the food of summer in the winter, and then the sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَ رَبَّ Then he asked Allah while in secrecy, قَالَ رَبِّ هَبْلِ مِنْ لَدُونَكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى He made supplication, he says, Oh Allah, I want a child. I need a son, Ya Rabbi. فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ Angels came to him while he's in the mihrab, saying, 
وَيُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا وَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ He will be clever, wise, he will speak to the people even in the grave. Sorry, Audubon. He will speak to the people even in the Fil Kahdi. He will speak to the people Fil, fil Mahdi wa Kahlan. When he is a small baby and he is in his cradle. Only three, in one hadith it mentioned three babies spoke in the grave. In the, um, why am I saying grave and stuff? Three babies spoke in the cradle. Fil Mahdi. There were three babies who spoke in the cradle and then there was another baby who spoke in the ditch. In Sahih al-Bukhari there are three babies that spoke and there's one that spoke in the ditch. So basically there are four babies that spoke while they were small babies. <laughs> قالت ربي أن يكون لي ولد ولم يمسسني بشر. Oh Allah سبحانه وتعالى. How do I give birth to a child and no man has touched me? No one has touched me. How could I even give birth? سبحان الله. قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء. It was said to her, you know what Allah does whatever He wants, He creates whatever He wants, whatever He wants, whatever He wants. إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَوْكُمْ فَيَكُونَ Allah only says, be and it is. Allah said, be to a virgin Maryam and she just conceived, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only fashioned Adam with his hand from clay, every kind of clay. You can see from the earth, Allah took a handful of the clay from the earth of this dunya and he fashioned human beings and this is how we have so many different color of people, subhanAllah. From nothing, from clay. And then Adam, he always said to him, be, kun. And it happened. He said, kun for the rivers and the streams and the rivers and the... The, the wind and the sun and the moon, everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only says kun. إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَقُونَ He just said be and it is. He doesn't have to do anything else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said be and the whole of Ad, this will destroy. He says be and the whole of Thamud will destroy. He says, be, and the river opened by the stick of Moses, alayhi salam. He said, be, and the river closed, and Fir'aun is drowned. This Fir'aun was such a barbaric, most disbelieving. You can find him in the museums today, the rivers, the sea. Spit him out on the ocean, subhanAllah. He, he was not even consumed by the earth. Allah left him so mankind can think. No wonder why so many doctors, lawyers, dentists, Scientists, men who have understanding, every time they see this Fir'aun, how he was drowned, they become Muslim. SubhanAllah. So then Maryam, she was astonished when she was told by the angels. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah, وَيُعَلِّمُهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ He teach him the book, wisdom, the Torah, and the Injil. وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِلَ أَنِّي قَدْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِآيَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ He came as a prophet to Bani Israel and he said to them, I came as a warner, a sign, I am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anni akhluku lakum min al-tayni ka hai adil tayri fa'afuk. I create for you birds from clay. Fa'afuku fihi fayakunu tayram bi'ithni Allah. I will take this clay, I will make a bird and I will blow. And it will become bored in, this, in front of the people subhanallah. وَأُبْرِئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ وَأُحْيِ الْمَوْتَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ He would place his hand on the eyes of, 
a blind man, then this man began to see again. A person was born blind. He placed his hand on the man who had leper, and this leprosy goes away. He said to him, Today you had bread and fish. And he told them what they hid in their homes as well. SubhanAllah. He does so many miracles. He caused some people who were dead for years ago, years and years ago, he caused them to raise them back in front of the eyes of the people with the permission, the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then before she even gave birth to this, in Surah 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentioned, he mentions that, that then Isa alayhi salam, after Maryam became pregnant, the people became worried. Now they said, subhanallah, what's happening here? What have you done, Maryam? What have you done, O oh Maryam? Then they said to her, they accused her, they gave her all kinds of grief, subhanallah, many kinds of grief. Then she went to a far place and she took refuge under a date palm and then she gave birth to the child and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she you know she said so many kalam, the story is so long, we just need to summarize subhanallah. Allah says to her, don't be sad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. She sought refuge under a date palm then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when she gave birth, she says, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasyam mansiya. Qalat ya laytani, qala ya laytani, qalat ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasyam mansiya. I wish I was forgotten and I was dead. I wish I was dead, I wish I was forgotten. I can't bear this pain. And then the angel said, Oh Maryam, don't be sad. Look under you, there's, there's some stream running there. She saw a river. She saw the stream running. She took water. Angel said, Oh Maryam, look at that tree. Shake it. She took hold of this trunk of this date palm. Massive tree. Wallah, if 10 of us go right now and shake that tree, nothing will happen. It's massive, massive. You know, this date palm is really strong. Now she's just, just given birth, she's scared, worried, thirsty, hungry, and Allah is telling him, just telling her, just hold to the date tree and shake it, and then you will see dates, rotta, will fall off from this tree. Take and eat. Drink from the water, eat from the date. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Huzzi ilayhi bi nakhla tu alayhi janiyya. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't want you to sit in this masjid only and you sing a chant and you expect grapes and dates gonna fall from the skies. No, this is nonsense business. Maryam is in this state and she still has to shake this tree, subhanAllah. She still has to do her part before the dates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could have made them dates fly like birds into her mouth. Say, oh Maryam, open your mouth and then one by one the dates was flying like this. Why do you even need to dip the water, subhanAllah? Allah could have made a stream like this that ends and it just falls in the mouth like this. <laughs> nice. No. Allah says, go and take the water. Look, he's telling her to go. Teaching the Muslims what? Do some work, man. You sit there waiting on every Monday. Where you're gonna go and tell someone lies and sign on for 55 quid? 60 quid? Allah, this, this is mental stuff, man. This loser's business you're telling me about. Allah, this is loser business. You have to go and work, ayyuhal ikhwan wal akhwat. And then Allah subhanahu wa then the people came and then she says, then Allah says to her, watch, when you go back to your people, because she went far away, she just couldn't take them, just give her, you know, headache, too much headache. Then when she came up, Allah says, don't speak. Don't speak to them. And then they said, oh Maryam, she says, Falan ukallim al I will not speak to human beings. 
And then she came to her people carrying this baby in her hand. And then the people said, Ya, Ya Ukhta Harun, meaning that she was from the descendants of Harun, O sister of Harun. Laqad jayti shay'an fariya. What is this? What is your case? Before she got pregnant, now you have a baby. What kind of shame you bring upon us? And then she says, and then she says, they, oh, they even added, they even added, Ya ukhta haruna ma kana abuke mura'ata sa'u wa ma kana ummu qibariya. Oh, Maryam, what is, this, what is this business you're doing here? What kind of shame you're bringing upon us? Your father wasn't a bad man. He was righteous. And your mom wasn't a baghi. Do you know what's a baghiya? You know those women you go private property on them highlight districts? Them ones, them jahil, them corrupt bad boys, Muslim bad boys, go and use 20 quid, here you go. That's the meaning of bari, that's the meaning of, of um, bari. So they're telling her, your dad wasn't a bad man, your mom wasn't. Sure. What is your problem, Maryam? Subhanallah. She couldn't, she did, she what did she do? Fa'asharat ilayhi. She pointed the baby and they're like, are you going to make Mickey now? We have a serious conversation here now. And you pointed the baby, do you recognize Salam. Isa alayhi salam was not a son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was just born miraculously. And there's no need to say, oh, because he was born from a virgin, Mary, may Allah be pleased with them, then he is a son of Allah. No, he's not. He's not the son of Allah. Because Adam had no father and no, no mother, therefore he's a bigger son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want to worship Jesus and you think worshiping Isa alayhi salam is going to bring you success, then you should be worshiping Adam because he had no father, no mother. And in fact, when Jesus alayhi salam died, if he was God, then who's controlling the world then now? So it doesn't even make sense. So your God is dead now, so who are you going to worship? Grave. But that's Hinduism, man. That's Jahiliyyah. So you can be a Muslim and tell me you're Sunni, and then you can ask from the grave, and then you say, oh, I'm a Sunni. I'm a Sunni Muslim. What kind of Muslim are you? Sunni forward slash Jahiliyyah forward slash Kafir forward slash people of hell? What's wrong with your brains? Huh? Liverpool is meant to be cool, isn't it? You bring it to be chill. Story of Maryam, amazing. Wallah, is amazing story. And there's so many more ayah and so many things we can speak about Maryam, but subhanAllah, the time is finished. So now we have to do some rush business now. We have Khadija bin to Hawaii, radiallahu anhu. So how many have we spoken about so far? You tell me. Name them. Asia and who was Asia? The wife of Firaun. And the other person we spoke about was Maryam, and she was the was she the son or the daughter? Was she daughter or son? Making sure you guys are awake. <laughs> See some sleepy faces here now. We want to wake them up. This brother who's on that post over there, that one is hiding his mouth like this. Who are we going to speak about now? Khadija. MashaAllah. You know, brother, what's your name? Muhammad. Are you married? You know, I have a really nice sister for you. She was married um, twice before. Yeah? Come forward, you come forward and you tell this nice proposal I have in <laughs> Don't be shy now, you know. Or running off and just use it, finding your shoes outside the leg for more. My mom is going to rip me up now. Come forward, take it, come next to me. Bring that chair over here. <laughs> One minute interview. Let's see if you pass this interview. 
What's your name? Muhammad. How old are you? 23. 23. MashaAllah. Ahlan wa sahlan. You speak English, right? Yeah. I have a read. Are you married? No. No. You want to get married? Yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> say Inshallah. Because you know, if you don't say Inshallah, maybe you wouldn't. So you have to say Inshallah, yeah? I have a really nice sister for you, yeah? She was married twice and divorced. And she has like three children. But she's about 15, 20 years bigger than you. Will you accept? He says no. She's only 15, 20 years bigger than you. I mean, more experience better for you, isn't it? You'll be laughing. What do you reckon? You don't need to shake, you know. I'm not going to eat you, you know. I'm not going to find you in your house. SubhanAllah, he still says no. What do you say? I see you smile and your face become red. Yes. Are you married? I say yes, maybe. Second. I say yes. I say yes because second one. Second one. So you want second one? You better be careful your wife is not mistaken. <laughs> What's your name? Ali Miski. Ali Miski. <laughs> Take note, you'll be, you'll be beaten up badly tonight. <laughs> You know what I mean? Sometimes, if I can't sleep in the night, I turn like five times, six times, seven times, and it's like, I just open my eyes slightly to see my wife is open. If she's awake, and I'm like, oh my God, she's awake. She says, I hope you're not thinking about the third and the fourth one. <laughs> they always go jealous, man. Okay. Jazakallah for coming forward. Jazakallah. Allah you feet. We want to speak about Khadija radiallahu anha. You know what? I think my time is finished. Do we adjourn this meeting? Do I go home or do I continue? Are you sure? If any one of you feel pressure, like Uncle Marshall is going to sleep now, you can just go home and rest. You don't need to be here. I'm not here to burden you. I have. Wallahi, we can come here every other day, inshallah, be inshallah. Say inshallah. Yeah? So those of you who think is you have had too much, enough of Asiya, enough of Maryam, mashallah, you can go home, have a rest. Yeah? But those of you who want to learn some more and be brave like my miskin friend there, and be like my miskin friend here, let's, let's see what's happening in this story now. So Khadija radiallahu anha, she um, was a wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she lived with him for 24 years. 25, 24, 25 years. And she was 25 years, he was 25, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while Khadija was 40 years of age. How old was she bigger than him? 15. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you, I'm just, I'm just looking at you. See what you're doing. At her wedding, when Khadija, you know, she, she, she hired him, she, she used the, you know, Khadija radiallahu anha, she was very intellectual in terms of business mind because her dad, um, Khawaili, he was a successful businessman. He was a very successful businessman and he had lots of wealth, subhanAllah. So she inherited lots of money from her dad and she was very wealthy. And because she had this mentality of multiplying this money over and over and over, she only looked for the youth in Mecca who had a who had a sound mind. You know, some youth, Wallahi, most of our youth today, they, they just make trouble and fight. They, they go on YouTube, they make a funny video, then they go on Facebook and they make some bad comments. They're not really constructive. They, they're not doing anything with their life, subhanAllah. So that's what we find. Most of our youth, Wallahi, we need to guide them, mold them, help them. This Khadija, radiallahu anha, she inherited this sense of business so she only looked for the youth who were clever and then she hired so many men to go to Syria and different places and then she eventually hired Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then Maisara who went with, with him and came back and told her about the cloud and you know this place where he took shade under the tree and then she took she, the comments of this, this man and you know, many several things and the people liking the way you do the business and you made more profit than the, the previous guys, the previous people before. And she became interested and she, she wanted to, to marry him. So she didn't know what to do really, but her friend 
Nafisa. She went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then she made, he made, she made a proposal and said, how would you like to marry a rich businesswoman? The same way I did it to him, you know. <laughs> and then he says, well, it depends if she wants to marry me. It's not me only want to marry him, uh, her, but it's only, it only depends as well if she wants to marry me. Well, if she fancies me, well then alhamdulillah, I'm good. So then this Maisar, this Nafisa, this servant of, uh, of Khadija came back with the news and said, yes, he accepted this, okay, it's fine. So the uncles became part of it and everything and then Khadija radiallahu anha, she was born in the year 557, father was Khawailid, her mother, her mother was Fatima. Khadija's mother was Fatima. And then Khadija's daughter was Fatima. So that's amazing. So they kept the name going over and over. Her dad was very popular among the Quraysh. And he was among the influential leaders. He was a very successful businessman. She had her first, Khadija's first husband was Abu Hala Malak. Abu Hala Malak. And he died. And she got two children for him. One is Hind and one is Hala. So her first husband was Hala, and she got two children whose name was Hin and Hala. And then when he died, she married to Atiq ibn Aif, Atiq ibn Aif ibn Abdullah al Makhzumi. But because she was of their knowledge and expectation and intelligence, then there was no compatibility with this attic, and then they end up in a divorce. And she had one child from this second marriage whose name was Hinda. So she had three kids, and she was 24, 25 years, no, sorry, she was 15 years bigger, and she was di divorced. She was married twice before she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How does that sound to you? You're going to think about, about it now, yeah? Yeah? She was the greatest supporter during the early days of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She's the first lady of Al-Islam. The first lady of Al-Islam. She's the first lady of this dunya, subhanAllah. And she will be the first lady in paradise. She was the grandmother of Al Hassan Al Hussein. And who were the youth, the four ghosts of youth in paradise? And the patience, she had much patience. She has she had tremendous patience after being in two marriages before and had three previous kids. Then she's full of wisdom, stability. Lots of wealth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go every year and spend so many days, so many days in the cave, taking barley and date, water, and she would be home patient, not mourning and complaining. Where have you gone? Where are you going? No, I want to come. I want to be with you. <laughs> no, you have to be here today. No, no, you're not allowed. You know how the women mourn today? You can't go to the washroom, well, she's coming in and see, make sure you, all right, all right. She's making sure that you're there. She doesn't want you to come out your eyesight. So much, some more women are so jealous, subhanAllah. But this Khadija had so much patience, he would go in the mountain, in the cave of Hira, and he would meditate, many days at a time. She was given salam by the angels. The angel Jibril came and said, Oh Khadija, tell Khadija assalamu alaikum. Tell, give her my salam and tell her she will not toil in Jannah. Subhanallah. So she was given glad tidings of Jannah. She was given glad tidings of Jannah. She was a mother of six of Rasulullah's children. She gave birth to Abdullah and Qasim. And both of them died in infancy. And then she gave birth to Zainab, Ruqayya, Um Kulthum, 
and Fatima. Zainab, Ruqayya, Um Kulthum, and Fatima. How many children she had? Six children. The two boys died in infancy. And how many children she had in previous marriages? Three. Make it how many birth? Nine. Khadija died at the age of 65, which was three years before the Hijrah. Three years before the Prophet wasallam migrated to Medina. He, sallallahu, she, he, he, he anha, died. So before he, when she died, they lived for 24, we said 24 to 25 years. And her, his uncle Abu Talib also died in the same year. So it was a really sad year for him. When the, when the Makkans, his uncles and his relatives were giving him real grief and stress, making him really upset and really sad. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was supported by Khadija Radiallahu Anha. She died and she was buried. She died in Makkah and she was buried in a place that's called Al-Hujun. Hujun. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asleep one day and he heard the voice of Hala, her sister, Khadija's sister. And he just woke up and jumped out of his sleep. And he says, Oh Allah, don't torture me. Make this Hala. Because her voice was just like the voice of Hala. So he loved the voice. He loved her voice, subhanAllah. Even many years after she died, when she turned dust. Aisha Allah Anha, when he speaks really, he speaks good of her, Aisha Allah Anha would become so jealous. She says, Her bone is rotted and turned dust. Why do you speak, still speak of her? You have better than her now. Referring to what? herself. So she he says, no, ya Hanash. No, I haven't got anything better. She was great. When he needed the support, morally, physically, financially, mentally, every kind of support that he needed for the first years when he was in Makkah, he needed it. She was there for him. So then he even memorized her voice when he see the belongings of her in the home, he would become really sad. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She was the first one to declare her faith in him. She trusted him and she knew that he would be the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she did not give him a hard time. She accepted Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so pleased with Khadija radiallahu anha, he even revealed some ayat. Allah says, وَالْضُحَا by, by the moon. وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا سَجَا And the night when it disappears. مَا وَدَّعْكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَا Allah hasn't, he hasn't forsaken you nor is he angry, he doesn't hate you. وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى and the hereafter is better for you than this world. Allah will give you the things that you are really pleased about. Did he not find you an orphan and then he and then he supported you? He found you as an orphan and gave you refuge. وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى Did he not find you astray and then he guided you? وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى Did he not find you one that is poor and he has given you richness? SubhanAllah وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا Find you without wealth, and he gave you Khadija. He find you without wealth. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave him wealth because he gave him Khadija. As for the yatim, the orphans, don't repulse them. Be kind to them. 
Diary of Jahannam, man. Our youth know everything, wallahi, on the internet. Wallahi, love him. Because, you know, we, the parents, we fail them. We sit in the masjid like a real malana sahab, and you make it zikr holy. Subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. Ya Rabbi bless Aisha, Ya Rabbi bless Khadija, Ya Rabbi bless Omar, Ya Rabbi bless Baruch, Ya Rabbi bless Abdul Rahman. Ya <laughs> and my man doesn't even give them advice. He gives them everything. PlayStation, internet, television, here you go, new car, here you go, new motorcycle, new clothing, a trip to Spain, a trip to Pakistan. My man has been to Pakistan 15 times and he hasn't gone to Hajj one time. Is this the kind of tarbiyah we give the parents? Wallahi, you either insane or you're just blind, deaf, dumb and blind. If you can go every year to Malaysia, Pakistan and Dubai and you haven't taken your children to Umrah and Hajj, Wallahi, khasar, you're a loser. You're a big time loser, man. You feel khusran in mobile. You have a dead heart. Or maybe you're just sickly. NHS, they're not going to kill you, man. The NHS, they scare you more than what you're meant to be scared. I was in the NHS the other day, and they said some ugly words to me, I fainted. Alhamdulillah, I'm here giving bayan, isn't it? From the fuddle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm still sitting there giving bayan. Allah, this is from the fuddle of Allah. Make the one that have good health in the end of the night, and make the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always protect them, keep me strong, inshallah, especially in that form. Lots of persecution, wallahi, soon after the siege, her mom died. And soon after the siege, her mom died, there was lots of persecutions. So much so that the, the kuffar, they placed a dead animal's intestines on the neck of Rasulullah, and it affected her so much, she was 10 years old. She became so upset, so angry. Whenever the people would treat the Prophet, they butter him with the shoes, they put intestines, they put rubbish in his yard, they, they throw the hint, the wife of Sufyan, his, uh, Abu Lahab threw the thorns in the path. His daughters used to cry, subhanAllah. They were very young, subhanAllah, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. They used to be very upset because it was their own uncles. He would call them and he would hug them and he would pat them on the head and tell them, don't you worry, subhanAllah, Islam is going to grow. Don't you worry. Now, Islam is every single place in this world you can think about. Islam is in every single household, even in Buckingham Palace. Right now, the queen can just log on to YouTube and type Sheikh Imran, Imam Imran, just watch me. What are you doing? Bayan, in Liverpool. Everywhere, I'm in the queen's house right now. Because every time I post a video on Google, we watch you, Panorama, watch you. Isn't it? Islam is everywhere, man. What a beauty, he hugged his daughters and he pat them and he says, no, don't cry, don't be upset. Islam is going to grow, Islam is going to be good. Look at these people, they bore the difficulties just for Islam to reach here today. And today you take everything for granted. Everything you take for granted, you take a little topi on your head and some veil and a short top and I save you. How about your aqeedah? How about your love for this Ummahatul Mu'mineen? How about love for these companions, radiallahu anhum? We don't look like them, subhanAllah. We just look like George and Michael and Joseph and Mary. Like Kafirs we look like. We need to be looking like Muslims, smelling like Muslims, speaking like Muslims. Good kalima, tayyiba. Live for Allah's sake. Be kind to the Imam, gentle, humble, polite, not disrespectful. Be kind to your parents. Live Islam. This is why we want to live. Islam, Muslim. 
So here we have in this example when she was 18 years old, many prominent men, Fatima radiallahu anha, when many, when she was 18 years old, prominent, came, they want to the prophecies, no. No, 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 not you, not you. And when Ali radiallahu anhu, when he asked for her, the prophecies, yeah, this is a good match. He sold a spare that he had for 400 dirham and he bought one of each item. One plate, one spoon, one cup, one bed, one everything. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. It was a simple wedding and if companions came, today people want 50, 60,000 mahar and I have to take the mom to Hajj and Umrah and give the dad 50,000 some, some places. What's the money? Saudi Arabia, if you go to Saudi Arabia, 40, 50,000. If not, you're not going to marry my daughter. Is she made of gold? Of diamonds? She's made of mud, man. Clay. Is she pious? Wow, what a seven, eight, nine, ten year old daughter. Or a young lad, five, six, seven, eight, fifteen years old. With his entire Quran in his head. Right now, as me and you speak. He's downloading pornography in Makkah. Why is he doing this now? Why is this Quran doing in those kids' head in Makkah and Medina? This entire Quran is his head and he's offloading pornography right now. What kind of leaders we have? Yeah, we need dishes. Corrupt the nations. Forget about these people, subhanAllah. Think about yourself, what are you doing? What are you doing, subhanAllah? The companions came, they had a very simple wedding, all of the companions, and then there's a Haritha ibn Nu'man, he swapped the house, he was away from Rasulullah. So that's the Masjid al Nabawi, and then there were houses along the way, then Haritha ibn Nu'man was some distance away, and he says to, to Fatima, Fatima was a bit, Ali's house was far away. So then this man, Haritha ibn Nu'man, he came and he swapped his house. He goes, Ya Ali, I want you to take, Nu'man's house was close to Rasulullah, next to Masjid al Nabawi. He says, Oh Ali, I want to swap so you and Fatima can be next to Rasulullah. He moved, his house was over there now, and then the house of Fatima became the house of next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come back from a trip, he would make wudu, make two raka'a in his masjid, then first he goes to his daughter, Fatima radiallahu anha. Isn't that amazing, Allah? How many fathers are in good terms with their daughters? Forget visiting them. How many fathers today are making their daughters like the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the best book you can find today? How many fathers has even a book for his daughters to read about these companions? They are just busy with their own dunya. The children from Fatima was Hassan, Wal Hussein, and Muhsin. And Muhsin died in infancy. And then she had two daughters whose name was Zainab and Unkuthum. So Fatima had a sister who was Zainab and she had a daughter who was Zainab. Fatima had a sister who was Unkuthum and she has a daughter who was Unkuthum. And then the prophet people used to say to Muhammad, Oh, you Abtar, 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 Abtar. Every time they see him, they say Abtar, Abtar to wind him up, to make him angry. Abtar, Abtar, the one who's cut off, no progeny. Because Abdul and Qasim died. And then he had Ibrahim from Maria Keptiya, the Coptic. And Ibrahim died as well. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gave him some progeny from. Fatima radiallahu anha, Hassan was the same. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed some ayah. 
Then pray to Allah and give sacrifice. Inna shani akahu al abtar. Those who hate you, very abtar. Those kafir of Makkah who hate you, they call you abtar. Inna shani aka, they are the abtar. So Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who protected the kafir, call him abtar. Ali wanted to. Subhanallah, Ali wanted to marry again and then the daughter of Abu Jahl and then the Prophet became angry because he says the daughter of a pious man and the daughter of a, of, of a man of hell cannot live in the same house. He climbed the member when Ali heard of this. He came and he apologized to, to Fatima and said, I'm sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا They give food to the, those that they love they give food to the miskin, the poor, the orphan, and the slave. <coughs> they give food only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fatima 
in Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawzi, in Ibn al-Jawzi, his tafsir saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in these ayat here, after that you find Allah is explaining Jannah, the beauty of Jannah. In this, after this ayat, Allah explains Jannah. Every time Allah explains Jannah, he speaks about Huri, the wives of Jannah. Every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a description of Jannah, he speaks about Huri. He explains it, Jannah, beautiful musk and silk and radiance and everything he explained about Jannah. After this ayat, وَيُتَعِمُونَ التُّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُتْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا قَمْتَرِيرًا فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَلَقَّاهُمْ نَبْرَةً وَسُرُورًا وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا Fatima was so jealous she didn't want Ali to take another wife. And after this description here, Allah he mentions this description of these people of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention Huris. Isn't this amazing? In every single description, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in every description, he mentions Huris. But because Fatim was so jealous, he mentions Jannah and these ayat about Fatima, and he did not mention Huris. Isn't this amazing? Wallahi, this Islam is great. It's a shame you guys don't live close by so you can do bayan every day. Isn't it a shame? Fatima radiallahu anha. Subhanallah, one eye more than we finish. She complained about the fatigue and then she says, Ya Rasulullah, I wanna, because the, the siege and this amount of pressure that the people, she only died at 20 something years old, subhanallah. Because of the amount of fatigue her uncle gave her dad and she suffered, her, her health was ill. She wasn't in good health. She wasn't in good health, but yet she's what? Mentioned by Allah. So you sisters, you have been, not you here, the sisters we're speaking to, everyone who is watching this bayan, everyone who's listening to this bayan, you don't have to be strong to be a pious sister. You can be even, you can have the ill health of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you the way he blessed Fatima radiallahu anha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his three daughters, they died while he was alive. But Fatima, she died six months after Rasulullah's death. He called her, he says, Fatima, and he told her something in her ear like this. And she started to cry. And then he called her again and she says something else in her ear. She started laughing. She was happy. When the Prophet died, Aisha and the rest of the companions, they asked, oh, what was it that made you laugh? Oh, it made you cry. She said, the first time he told me he's going to die. And then I cried. And the second time he told me, I will be the first from his members, from his progeny, who will follow him in Jannah. Subhanallah. So she laughed. Fatima was Allah and her, you know, it's amazing. She, she, she complained, she never complained, even though she endured so many difficulties in life. Al-Asr al ghaba by Ibn al athir says that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, Fatima radiallahu anha never ever smiled again. She never smiled. Because you remember before the Prophet died, she, he told him, she told him, he told her that he, she's going to follow him. So she knew she was next. She was very sad. She was really sad. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْ 
We say to the old uncles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept from you any crime that you commit as long as you pass the age of 40 years. Stop committing crimes. Stop shaving your beards as a crime. Stop telling lies and backbite. It's a crime. Stop smoking. It's a crime. Stop swearing to your wife and slapping them and beating them. It's a crime. Live only for Allah's sake. Spend your life only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When these people die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutuma'innah O beautiful soul, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah Come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is pleased with you. This is what we want. We live only for Allah's pleasure. When the angel come to us, then they will say, Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah While Allah is pleased with you. Fadakhuli fi ibadi Oh, come be from among my servants. Allah will say, come be from among my servants. Wadakhuli jannati Be from among the people of Jannah. May Allah bless each and every one of you. May Allah have mercy on you. May Allah bless the brothers who have brought me here today to give this nasiha force to myself. I'm a little Abdul Aziz, I'm a little Abdul Rahman. May Allah bless each and every one of us and the advice is forced to my fight, myself, my family, my wife, my children, my sons, subhanAllah. My uncles who are all Hindus, my aunts, my hundreds of cousins who are all Hindus. The advice is for us, me and my family forced. And then here to the Ikhwan bi idnillahi azza wa jal from everyone who will benefit from this, this advice bi idnillahi azza wa jal. May Allah bless the uncles who have facilitated us in this masjid today. May Allah bless them and have mercy on them. May Allah forgive them and keep them strong. Say Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wives who are pious. Louder. Say Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our wishes and fulfill our desires. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good in this world, good in the hereafter, and save us from the punishment of the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lay them lay out on us a body greater that we have strength to bear. May He blot out our sins and grant us forgiveness. May Allah accept from us our humble efforts, be in the Allah Azza wa Jal. Aqulu ma tasma'un wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa'il muslimin in kulli dhammin wa khati'a fa astaghfiru innahu huwa tawwabur rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.